the Assembly will hear an address by His Excellency Tiamoko Meliet Kohn, Vice President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire. I request protocol to escort His Excellency. I have great pleasure in welcoming His Excellency Timoko Mele Kone, Vice President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, and I invite him to address the Assembly. Excellent. Excellency, Mr. President of the 78th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, heads of state and government, Excellency, Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable Delegates, Mr. President, it is an honor to represent at this tribune the President of the Republic of Côte d'Ivoire, His Excellency Alassane Ouattara. I wish to convey to you President Ouattara's warm congratulations and words of welcome which I associate myself with. I wish also on behalf of the President, Mr. Ouattara, to convey our warm congratulations to you, Mr. President of the 78th Session of the General Assembly of the United Nations. Congratulations not just on your election, but also for and the I wish to commend you for the effective stewardship of our work. I wish to thank the Secretary General once again and wish to assure him of our full support for his various initiatives, initiatives which are geared towards making the United Nations more than ever before a center for the harmonization of the efforts of nations. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, this session is being held in a context of tremendous uncertainty, tremendous uncertainty for our planet and for our states, which have been encountering large-scale crises. This situation has been significantly impeding the implementation of Agenda 2030 for sustainable development and has also constrained our ability to collectively surmount these challenges. As we take stock of the situation, it is our duty to be clear-eyed, to recognize the fact that the anticipated resources for the financing of this important agenda are lacking. They are lacking specifically for developing countries. Given this observation, there is a need for us to move quickly, to stand in solidarity, we must ensure that the financing for the Sustainable Development Goals is both lasting and predictable. The, the noble and ambition of Agenda 2030 cannot continue to hinge on security expenditures which continue to increase with each passing year throughout the world. For this reason, my delegation applauds the very relevant theme of this 78th session, a theme which invites us to engage further, to step up our efforts to achieve the SDGs. To that end, we must promptly reduce the cost of conflicts which thwart our country's development to do so we must embrace conflict prevention and peaceful resolution mechanisms. At the same time, our governments must step up and enhance the resilience of our economies to ensure that the economies can contribute to the financing of the SDGs. To that end, Côte d'Ivoire welcomes with particular interest the Secretary General's proposal of a new agenda for peace the purpose of which is to rethink our priorities for the preservation 
and enhancement of our collective security. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for the international community to mobilize, to act, so that the parties to the conflict in Ukraine and all of their external partners engage on the path to a peaceful resolution to this war beyond the risk of escalating violence and human rights violations this conflict fuels global inflation this conflict has resulted in shortages in essential food products and has threatened to plunge millions of people into hunger given its scope and its consequences, the financial flows that this war has mobilized. In light of all of this, the war in Ukraine has certainly undermined the financing of Agenda 2030. My country also calls upon the international community to engage alongside Africa as we fight armed terrorist groups which destabilize entire sectors of the continent from the Sahel to the Horn of Africa. The fight against terrorism is costly for African countries, particularly for Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire has been hosting thousands of refugees from neighboring crisis-ridden countries. There are significant financial resources that are needed but lacking to finance the priorities, expenditures, as well as the SDGs. Everywhere they have entrenched themselves, armed terrorist groups have been annihilating decades of progress. Progress in key sectors such as education, health care, culture, and employment has been reversed. They have denied women and minorities their basic rights. They reject the very f idea of freedom and democracy. That having been said, and in view of this, my country invites the United Nations and ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, to consider financing modalities for the counterterrorism priority actions. These were adopted by ECOWAS in 2019, and the implementation of this has been delayed. Côte d'Ivoire has been seeing to the effective operations of the Jacquesville International Academy for Counterterrorism. This academy was established with the support of both bilateral and multilateral partners, and the academy also currently enjoys a stellar reputation. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, climate change persists as a challenge and has significantly impacted economies and our ability to tackle the challenge of development financing. Developing countries such as Côte d'Ivoire have contributed marginally to climate change, and yet we are disproportionately affected and we pay the highest price. We are an agricultural country, and my country and has an ambition to step up the fight against the consequences of climate change in order to boost the resilience of our population. First and foremost, the aim is to improve sustainable net management of natural resources and biodiversity, and subsequently, we aim to cultivate in our population a civic awareness for the preservation of the environment and the advancement of sustainable development. To that end, we urge partners who have adopted a commitment alongside us during COP15, COP uh, organized in Abidjan in May 2023, uh, to pursue their support for the implementation of the Abidjan Initiative, which is also called the Abidjan Legacy Program. This hallmark initiative for land restoration, for the preservation of biodiversity, and for the development of responsible agriculture is an opportunity, an opportunity for both current and future generations. In light of current challenges, bilateral and multilateral partners need to 
meet their financial commitments under the Paris Climate Agreement. They should thereby facilitate the entry into force of the loss and damage fund, which was established during COP27 in Egypt. Côte d'Ivoire welcomes the success of the African Summit on Climate held in Nairobi on the 5 to 6th and the 5th to the 6th of September 2023 and we applaud the exceptional mobilization of Africa to have our voice heard during the forthcoming COP28 in Dubai. I wish to take this opportunity to invite the international community to support the Nairobi climate recommendations, specifically with respect to enhancement production capacity for renewable energies in Africa. The proliferation and succession of violent climate events have been observed in recent years, and this has resulted in widespread significant material damage and tragic human casualties and costs. This, these ravages are a consequence of our climate inaction, and it wipes out progress achieved in the area of the SDGs, specifically for the most vulnerable countries, the countries most vulnerable to climate change. This reflects just how much the fight against climate change will require greater solidarity, as well as resources dedicated to the financing of the SDGs, and will also require that both our economies and our societies adapt. Mr. President, the COVID-19 pandemic has revealed the fragility of our health systems and has, among other things, slowed down the pace of economic growth in Africa. COVID-19 has also served as a reminder of the importance of forging meaningful international solidarity to tackle the multifaceted threats which humanity continues to face. The repercussions of COVID-19 continue to loom over our economies and affect our capability to address urgent social demands. We must draw lessons from the threat that can once again imperil the entire world. For this reason, my delegation welcomes the conduct during this session of high-level meetings on pandemic prevention, preparation, and response, as well as on, counter, on the fight against tuberculosis, as well as on universal health coverage. Turning to universal health coverage, I wish to recall the fact that my country has adopted a regime entitled universal health coverage. This entered into force in October 2019. I wish to, I, I hope that the sharing of experience during this session will offer an opportunity for our health coverage systems to be enhanced. Mr. President, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, under the aegis of the President of the Republic, Côte d'Ivoire has been shoring up our democratic progress. This has been attested to recently by the smooth conduct of recent municipal, regional, and senatorial elections, which we organized respectively on the 2nd and 16th of September 2023. These elections saw large turnout with all political parties participating. They were carried out in a transparent and calm way, thereby demonstrating the political maturity of the people of Côte d'Ivoire. Stability, peace, and democracy, which reign in Côte d'Ivoire, have allowed the president of Côte d'Ivoire, His Excellency Mr. Ouattara, to pursue his efforts towards the transformation and modernization of his country. There has been remarkable progress achieved by Côte d'Ivoire in all sectors. This has fostered significant headway in the achievement of the SDGs. 
the solidity of the Ivorian economy has helped to significantly reduce poverty rates, which are presently at approximately 36.5% as compared to 56% in 2011. These rates should continue to move downwards and drop to 20% by 2030. At the same time, since 2015, there has been an ambitious program in place of productive social networks to assist the most vulnerable households. In the same vein, the government adopted an ambitious social program, the PSGov. This program helps to counter social fragility. The policy of the government and successive development, national development plans have helped to improve progress towards the SDGs in Côte d'Ivoire. However, this social progress has been undermined by large refugee flows from neighboring countries stricken by terrorism. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, we have all arrived at the same conclusion. Our states are far from being in a position to achieve the SDGs by 2030. The financing of our development agenda reflects the urgent need for a multilateral approach. A multilateral approach, multilateralism, to tackle current global challenges. And uh, there is also a need for us to consider the need to reform global governance at all levels and to restore the meaning of solidarity among nations, a principle dear to His Excellency President Ouattara which we were also invited to embrace by the Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, in his opening statement for this session. Thank you. On behalf of the Assembly, I wish to thank the Vice President of the Republic of Ivory Coast for the statement just made, and I request protocol to escort His Excellency.